Caddis Maximus here, this time with a quick review of the 3M Scotch Track TK6B Live Circuit Tracer. So many places like Harbor Freight sell cheap $20 circuit tracers. Those are offline or for circuits that are disconnected. This is an online or a live circuit tracer. Even if you do have a dead circuit, these type of live capable circuit tracers can be used because all you need is to put a battery in. In series, if you do have a, a completed circuit, and then you can provide your own power to drive one of these. These live circuit tracers, like on this 3M, this is the 6B one, and so it will work from 9 to 600 volts. My experience is right at the bottom at 9 volts. It really has a hard time. It pretty much needs a minimum of 12 volts. But it's also AC or DC, so you can just pretty much plug it into anything. These are used industrially as well as by home electricians just all over the place because these are used to track live circuits and the difference in the on law offline type is these uh, online types make it very convenient if you need to turn a circuit breaker off on a particular outlet you can plug this in this does not have a receptacle it just has alligator clips so you do need to make some type of special cord I have a very uh, crude version uh, I am going to make a little bit safer one, but if you ever do this, always make sure that you have the contacts offset so they can never touch, or it's much more difficult. Anyway, this thing you just plug in, and it has this, and this is just a little radio transmitter, and then it has this little wand that you wave. It has various uh, gain levels, as well as will beep at the 4.5 kilohertz signal, and giving you this little ring of LEDs that kind of indicates how close you are. This does advertise that being able to have a maximum distance of several feet. I don't know exactly how well it works. Um, this is a much older unit. I think this is from the early 2000s. Although looking online, it seems that they are still sold, but I don't know if they're actually have been made for a while. But these types of units, and I don't do want to say there's lots of like Greenlee and Amprobe and a lot of the big kind of industrial service brand names have had these but uh, early on they were tremendously expensive like this 3M Scotch track uh, 20 years ago was I think it was like a couple hundred dollars although they show up all the time on the used market at the end of the video I am going to do a quick look inside just so people can see what's inside uh, one of these units and what you're actually getting for electronics for a couple hundred dollars because there are Chinese one versions of live uh, circuit trackers that are obviously very cheap. So that's why I'm going to take a look inside just to show like build quality of a very expensive unit. The big difference between offline and live circuit uh, or circuit tracers is that these have to have the electrical rating and so what a big portion of the expense is they have to be designed differently if this thing is meant to be plugged into 600 volt AC circuits like in industrial plants because for some reason you can't trace a wire wasn't laid or is supposed to and so you have to trace it around with one of these this needs to be able to safely handle those kind of voltages so the packaging and the electronic design all has to be uh, much different to ensure that it doesn't you know have a meltdown and yes this is uh, American made I'll show that it was uh, made in Austin Austin Texas is where that was made or this I should say okay let me uh, do a quick demonstration of this and then I'll cut some some video doing it uh, it's circuit breaker detection as well as demonstrating that these do have one Achilles heel because they're whether they're offline or online they're injecting a radio signal into uh, the wires and if you have power conditioners power filters you know really cheap ones won't block the signal but I'll show on high quality ones isolation transformers uh, that type of equipment can block the signals from these and it's always something to be aware of because you'll think of that something's not working or that you have a broken wire and really there's some type of power conditioning equipment that's filtering it out okay I got this plugged in and I'm actually going to turn off the light. This does have a little indicator blinker, which I like, so it pulses. One thing is if you're running at, like, low voltages, uh, you know, using this maybe in an automotive or some boat applications, the light is pretty dim. You really, this is on 110 volt AC now, um, and I did want to mention that, but it is pretty neat, and you can actually hear its pulse. So you, because it is in an audible tone, and so then you have this detector. I have it on the search mode, which is it's most sensitive. 
and just right next to the box, you know, they advertise eight feet. I'm about 12 inches away at the highest sensitivity setting and we're at one dot. What if I lift up the wires a little bit here? So I downloaded like some kind of literature that advertised multiple feet and you can still hear this remote also has a speaker so it's making the same sound that you heard that's coming out of the hour you can hear it when I'm running it but I about 12 inches and that's what I've read is there's some of these that really work from a greater distance that are really sensitive but they don't have enough attenuation so if you're actually trying to find circuit breakers it becomes pretty darn difficult the reason for that being that it just you can't whenever you will get near a block of circuit breakers and it'll start going and you can't really find the exact one and that's like the biggest use of these is uh, where you know I need to work on this outlet or this lamp or something and so you can plug this in and then find the exact circuit breaker so let me go ahead and cut to a couple different shots here and demonstrate that okay we have our power equipment here I'm just doing a quick hand hold but we have it plugged into a the same receptacle that this unit is plugged into so when we use this we can see whoop now you can now you can see oh that's kind of interesting it's actually not ticking very loud because and there's a whole bunch of other noise which is an interesting effect you can hear the background noise this is an isolation transformer and this is just to point out how well one of these things work this is a really strong signal that it puts in the line and even with all that background noise we can hear it this is on the highest sensitivity and you can see that I have to be real close to it it's barely even starting to tick this is a three wires so when you have a three wire and a ground wire that really attenuates the signal of the box and that causes a lot of trouble that people have but what's interesting is on the this isolation transformer it almost completely filters it out let me switch cords on that unit so that you can get a better feel for the effect here we are again this time I just have it plugged directly into this wire so that you can easily see how its effect works and when there's a three wire or ground wire running along it kind of makes it a little difficult there's also something capacitance of the amount of wire that it goes through and how it's kind of works I don't know exactly how to explain it but we can see that this box here wherever it is there's the box is just plugged into a short like eight feet eight foot piece of extension cord and we still have to be next to it it goes right into the socket and this other cord coming out of the socket has like half or a quarter of the signal strength of the wire that's going in and it's just passing through a receptacle and passing through the receptacle and going into this cord um, makes a big difference in how much it attenuates the signal okay so let's go and take a look at how you find breakers okay here we are at a bank of circuit breakers I did want to point out that when it puts the signal in it will make that little noise throughout all the wiring so you the ones that have both the speaker and the lights are much better to use as well as adjustable attenuation that way uh, it helps you know that you're not following the wrong path that you're actually getting to a stronger signal so this has multiple modes and you go to the circuit breaker mode and I tend to use that to grossly find or generally find where the circuit breaker is and then I move to the wire mode so you do that and you just go up and down it's still pretty weak there we go it's pretty bright even on that one but I still like going to the wire mode you are supposed to hold these perpendicular that way I know I'm pretty close basically none and then right there I'm getting some light so it's really pretty easy to find the circuit breakers that's versus using this mode because you might think whoops it's this one when it's actually that one so that's what the night is nice about that attenuation and obviously if you go into the search mode here it'll just blink everywhere and you know you can see all that noise that's one of the reasons I made those reviews on the power conditioning equipment is because I've had this tool for a long time and using it and just seeing all that amount of noise that's in the power line just was amazing I you know and people talk about oh, so many electronics failing and I know the various reasons for that but how much of it is just poor quality power conditioners and just dumping huge amounts of noise trying to make the electronics and the power supplies deal with all that noise on top of just doing what they're supposed to which is general you know make power for your electronics 
So as you can see, this is a pretty useful tool. Sorry for that jump cut. That may have been a little bit odd. I'm uh, working on my editing skills. But you can see how this type of tool can really save a lot of time. And then you also have to be aware of what you're doing when it's a live circuit tracer. And technique, you know, noticing that uh, the way the detector works, that you have to be aware, especially when there's a bunch of wires together, you really got to fiddle with the attenuation and, and be careful to know that you're really on the correct one. And just to finish off the video, I'm going to pop these open just so you can have a quick look inside. And just for comparison, for any, you know, I do that for any people who are interested on what's inside things like this and when they're relatively easy to open up. So let me do that. Here we go. Now that we've got these broken open, I did want to point out a couple of things here. The first one is is that it uses little uh, star or torx bits, torx. I always say that wrong. And then regular in the remote, but in the transmitter, the block, the box, it just uses standard steel. And this or uh, is number one Phillips. The other thing I was going to point out, and at least on these 3M units when they are charging so much money for them is the screws in the box are only steel, uh, but the ones that are in the remote are stainless steel. And I thought that was kind of interesting why they wouldn't use stainless steel on both of them, but nonetheless, stainless steel screws on a plastic electronic device is uh, definitely not the normal. Inside the remote, we have our little uh, button panel. There's some electronics to drive the LEDs. This is actually held on by double-sided sticky tape, which is then sandwiched on top of the uh, this foam block which kind of holds it in place. I'm not going to peel it off there. They have a hole that goes to the grill for the little beeping speaker. This is another thing I wanted to point out with this 3M unit. It's a German made uh, speaker. Uh, so seeing things like that, uh, the electronics are actually pretty nice. Uh, they use name brand Motorola and Maximum components. There's a little antenna up front. And there's a potentiometer for some type of calibration, and then it uses a nice socket to plug into the second board. And there it is, made in Austin, Texas. The other thing that I was going to mention uh, is that they didn't put a conformal coating, which is like a spray-on plastic to kind of protect this, since this is meant to be used in all sorts of uh, industrial and commercial environments, you know, by electricians and millwrights, etc. And so I'm surprised it didn't add more protection to the board, but it would certainly be easy to fix. Uh, and then here's the transmitter box, and it has some pretty complicated uh, and surprising mix of electronics, mainly because it has to run from that, you know, 9 volt through 600 volts, AC or DC. So it all has to be set up to take that wide voltage range. Many of the things are going to be designed in here, like these giant resistors. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised. There's a lot of large components here and a couple of different uh, potentiometers for some type of calibration. A large heat sink, I'm sure, for the some type of power transistor or component. You know, I'm not an electronics expert. And it does have a fuse, so if it ever has issues, you can check a fuse inside. In this box, there's actually four screws at four points holding the circuit board to the back half, so it is pretty well secured. But, you know, these types of boxes on lower quality units, that's where it gets a little scary because if you were using this industrially and connecting it to... You know, truly 480 volt, three phase AC power to trace lines or uh, true 600 volt, then you're going to really uh, want to have a high quality component just because it, things can get so dangerous and they're just so, uh, so much hazard associated with those kind of high voltages and both in just design like this, but as well as ensuring that you're using quality components. Anyway, I'm going to end this long review finally on this. Uh, 3M Scotch Track Circuit Tracer. Where does it say Scotch Track? Somewhere oh, on the front of this. There it is. Scotch Track Circuit Tracer. And I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you uh, haven't subscribed and do like my videos, please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.